Good afternoon. This weekend, we're looking at Mark 10, 23 through 31. The first shall be last, and the last shall be first. And today, I'm picking up where we left off last week, which was a story, a sad story, of a young man who had everything. He had wealth, he had nobility, and he had a passion for the Lord as well. But he had one foot in and one foot out. He had his riches and he wanted both. He wanted to stay within the world, but also to worship Christ. So here you have a picture of Jesus is saying something that is disturbing and puzzling at the same time. When Jesus does talk, when he does teach, he can be straightforward, it hits you in the head, or it could be very roundabout, and you have to search the parables for the answer. But here we have a picture in your mind of this young man who had just left them. The disciples are with Jesus, and they're watching him as he walks away, disheveled, and his head is down. He's sorrowful for the fact that he can't part with his possessions. He can't part with this world and everything that it has in it. He just could not bring himself to come fully to Christ. It is a sad story. It's a disturbing story because it happens every day in this culture today as well. So we see in Mark 10, 22 to 24, disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowfully, for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how difficult it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said to them, again, children, how, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. So, as your mind pictures this young man walking away, leaving, leaving the church, leaving God, leaving his faith, we don't know if he came back. That's not in the story. But as he's leaving, and he might have been even an earshot of Christ, and Jesus turns to his disciples and said how difficult it is. And the disciples are both amazed at what he says. For what he says as, he, as we go on is, is something that we don't normally hear. And he goes on and says, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And the words here we can't miss in Scripture. They were exceedingly astonished. And they were shocked. Then who can be saved? And Jesus uses these analogies. And there isn't anything else we need to talk about. It's, it's right there in front of us. Pretty straightforward. We don't need to research what Jesus is saying. He's saying it's going to be easier, impossible, impossible for anyone to try to come on their own to the kingdom of God. It is going to be impossible for anyone to try to do his own works and enter the kingdom of God. The message here is about riches, yes, but it's also about possessions, and it's also about the heart of man. Direct language here, and this story is so, so poignant, because we had saw this young man last week with all of the promise of coming to Christ, and Christ said, I love you. He loved him. But he wanted to live so badly in two worlds. 
And Jesus is using this advantage, this, this teaching moment that just transpired with this young man to teach the disciples and more importantly, to teach us as well, you and me. Do we want to live in two different worlds? Do we want to have one foot in and one foot out of the church? Do we love this culture so much and the allure of all of this that this young man had and how important it is that we understand this teaching today, you and me? Do we want to live in two different worlds? Do we want to do that? And this story is directed by Jesus to us who read the Gospel of Mark. This teaching comes to each of us. We live today in this culture of 2024. The temptations, the pleasures, the luxuries, and the advantages that we have today. And I had a very hard week this week at seminary. This week we talked about Gnosticism. And I think most of you know what Gnosticism is. And I really did not understand or realize how it has permeated and is, is, is systemic in our society today. It is a teaching, a belief that you are God or you can do your truth. You have the spark, you have the energy to do whatever you want to do. God made the universe and walked away. And it's up to us to save, protect, and be all knowledge. That was the beginning of Gnosticism, and it has enveloped so much of our culture today and everything that we do. It's very, very dangerous because it seeps in little by little with our possessions. What we earned, what we have done, what truths are there today? That was part of the heresy that there is no truth. My truth is, is what I believe and I know I believe in it. That's my religion. And Jesus is warning us and teaching us that we cannot have one foot in the church and one foot in the world and try to live a dual life. It will cause us extreme pain and emotion that we cannot understand. It'll be in turmoil. We will be constantly upheavaled and in turmoil. Jesus here is speaking specifically about money, yes, and riches. And we could tie in a lot of different things. Obviously, money is the biggest thing in this topic that we're talking about, and what Jesus is saying about riches, but also possessions. But also, where is our heart in all of this? How hard is it to resist accumulating and storing and don't get me wrong, Jesus is not speaking about, uh, he's speaking about obsessions, not about storing and saving money and, and being able to provide for our families and for yourself and to give us what we need to exist. Jesus is using examples. But he also is using examples of the first commandment that he gave when someone asked, what is the greatest of commandments? And that is, Jesus is saying, Love our God, love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And to love our neighbor as ourself. This is basic teachings we learned as Lutherans, as Christians. That we can also walk away from these teachings. We can turn away and walk away for our own good that we think is good. Money is not the problem. No, it's the heart, the mind that can lead us away and turn us from God. As this young man did in the Mark's Gospel this morning, Jesus makes plain and he speaks in plain language. We can't get any plainer than a camel trying to go through a needle. That's how hard it's going to be for someone to try on their own, to be God, to gain the universe. Jesus makes us plain. He speaks plain language. There are difficult teachings, and the disciples are asking the question, 
we gave it all. Does that mean that you must? We must put ourselves in the position of what is God want me to do? What is his will for my life? What is our goal that he has given us? Is it for riches or possessions over the truth of his word, his commandments? We will lose every time. But when we decide that we want one foot in and one foot out, we will have conflict. We will have anxiety. We will have pain. We will have so many issues within ourselves when we try to do that. And Jesus does not want a lukewarm Christian. He has said that in Revelation. But also, money can fuel our desires of what this culture offers us. This is where our hearts can lead us away from God. We turn and walk away like that young man because we have all of the best. We have achieved it. And in this world that we live in today, this culture that we have, the digital conveniences with the, with the birth of AI, it can be as addictive as cocaine. One click away from anything you want to know, see, or do. How easy it is to be lured away from the simplest things by the distractions of what we have in this world today. It is looking at this screen, whether it is a flat screen or a little screen, it has our attentions. These days we have traded in our eye-to-eye, -eye, direct face-to-face -face contact with our loved ones, with our coworkers. We use Zoom. No need to be face-to-face -face anymore. In a dinner table, at a restaurant, we have become a society of robots as we do nothing but look into these screens. And Jesus is saying, where is your heart? Where is your mind? Are you lured away by this culture, by what we see? Not just money and riches that Jesus is speaking about here. He's speaking about our hearts. What are we lured away with? Do we have zero time for Bible study? Do we have zero time for quiet devotion with Christ? Do we have zero time to have a relationship with Him? Do we have zero time for Him, period? Zero time for church? And I have so many activities that I need to go to, that I need to be at. That is just as damning as having an obsession with money because we have obsessions with material things. And Jesus is telling us that there is only one way, one way that we can be happy here on earth, that we can have fulfillment in our days and our nights, that we can sleep well, that we can work well, that we can love well, and that we can see what's needed, and that is to go to others and show them the love that we have. When we give up our possessions, that is the lust of this culture, and give it to Christ. He says, come unto me. He wants us. And it's so easy, little by little, step by step, to get into this culture that of we have today and to wind up into Gnosticism that we don't even know we are in. For we look to our riches and our money and our stock market accounts and where is the stock market today instead of where is your heart today? The decision is yours. 
to either accept the fact that we can't get through that needle. There's no way. The only way is through Jesus Christ. For he will give us what our heart desires. uh, Augustine, who is one of the church fathers, says this, and I quote, O my soul, are the miseries that attach to riches. They are gained with toil and kept with fear. They are enjoyed with danger and lost with grief. It is hard to be saved if you have them, and is impossible if we love them and scarcely can even have them, but we shall love them inordinately. Teach us, O Lord, this difficult lesson to manage constantly the goods we possess and not covet them and desire more than you give us. It's a beautiful quote. He gives us what we need. He tells us, why worry about what you need because I will provide. And that comes through faith. Mark 10, 27 to 31, and Jesus looked at them and said, with man it is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. I could stop right there because that is the message. All things are possible with God. When we put our trust when we put our faith and we see what's really important in our day-to-day lives and is the personal relationship with Jesus Christ that comes first and foremost and everything else will fall into place. Put first Christ in your lives and he will teach you what it is to be humble, to be last and put others in front of you. And this Thursday afternoon, my eyes were opened to the sufferings that are just down the street from us in Rochester, off of Joseph Street, in a place called the House of Mercy, where there is over a hundred people that seek shelter every night and only can fit 70 to 75. They offer the best that they have. And if you could see the thankfulness of these people when we gave them those backpacks and they gave us a tour, showed, them, showed us their cubicle that they were so proud of. This is what mission is about. This is what the church is about. Providing the love of Christ to others. And I simply said to one of them, I said, why are you doing this? And I said, we are to love you. You're our neighbor. And she just looked at me and didn't know what else to say. But it's the simple things like that that mean so much. And this sermon and this passage meant so much more to me because it is not about us. It is not about our riches and our possessions. It is for us to take some of those that we really don't need and give them to others. They were so happy to get a pack of playing cards and having flip-flops to use in the shower, and simple things like that, toothpaste. And their faces said so much in thankfulness. We got hugs, and we walked away feeling this is something that we can do all the time, not just once in a while. Let us pray. Jesus teaches his disciples that they're not even people with the greatest worldly means can endure the kingdom of heaven on their own merit. We cannot justify ourselves. We receive salvation and inherit eternal life solely by grace through faith in Jesus, just like a little child. But Father, my heart's delight, my crown most bright. O Christ, my joy forever. Not wealth, nor pride, nor fortune tied our bonds of love shall ever 
servant. In Jesus' name, amen.